Imagine a man who had the power to charm, yet harbored a chilling secret that would shake the world. This man, seemingly ordinary, was Jeffrey Dahmer. On the surface, he was just like anyone else, friendly, charismatic, and seemingly harmless. But beneath this carefully constructed veneer lurked a terrifying darkness, a darkness that would ensnare unsuspecting victims in its inescapable grip. His charm was his weapon, his smile, a mask, concealing a secret so gruesome that it still sends shivers down the spine of those who dare to delve into his story. Dahmer, a man of contradictions, was a master manipulator, leading people into his devious trap with a terrifying ease. This is not just a tale of a man gone wrong. It's an exploration of the depths of human depravity, a chilling journey into the mind of a monster. This is the story of Jeffrey Dahmer, the Milwaukee cannibal. Born in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, Jeffrey's childhood was not unlike that of any other American kid. He came into the world on May 21, 1960 to Lionel and Joyce Dahmer, a chemist and a teletype machine instructor, respectively. Growing up in a middle-class neighborhood, Jeffrey had a typical suburban upbringing. However, beneath this facade of normalcy, there were early signs of the disturbing path he would later tread. Jeffrey's fascination with the macabre began to manifest itself subtly. He developed an unnerving interest in dead animals and their bones. This was no innocent curiosity of a young boy trying to understand the world around him. It was an ominous foreshadowing of his future atrocities. His father, Lionel, a chemist by profession, unknowingly nurtured this morbid fascination when he showed young Jeffrey how to bleach and preserve animal bones. The intention was to foster a scientific curiosity in his son. Little did he know that this would become a pivotal moment in Jeffrey's life, one that would later fuel his heinous acts. In school, Jeffrey was described as an intelligent yet introverted child. His teachers noted his aloofness and his tendency to keep to himself. Yet, no one could have predicted the darkness that was brewing within him. It was during these formative years that Jeffrey began to grapple with his sexual identity, adding another layer of complexity to his already troubled mind. As Jeffrey transitioned into adolescence, his life took a downward turn. His parents' marriage crumbled, culminating in a bitter divorce. The emotional turmoil at home, coupled with his burgeoning dark fantasies, pushed Jeffrey further into isolation. He sought solace in alcohol, which soon spiraled into addiction, marking the beginning of his descent into a world of unimaginable horror. From a young age, the seeds of Jeffrey Dahmer's horrific future were sown. This seemingly ordinary boy from Milwaukee would grow up to become one of the most notorious serial killers in American history, a name that would forever be etched in the annals of true crime. As Jeffrey entered adulthood, his fascination with death turned into something far more sinister. A chilling metamorphosis was taking place, one that would cast a shadow of terror over the city of Milwaukee. A descent into the abyss had begun. At the tender age of 18, Dahmer claimed his first life, an incident that marked the commencement of a heinous journey into the heart of darkness. The victim was a hitchhiker named Stephen Hicks, who tragically was simply in the wrong place at the wrong time. This was the first of many innocents who would fall prey to Dahmer's sinister urges. His pattern of luring victims was as calculated as it was cruel. Dahmer sought out young men at gay bars, shopping malls, and bus stops. He would strike up conversations, often offering them money or simply promising a few drinks and a good time. Once he had gained their trust, he would lead them to his apartment. The unsuspecting victims were then drugged, becoming helpless to fight back or escape. In this vulnerable state, they met their dreadful fate at the hands of Dahmer. Dahmer's killing spree was marked by a horrifying level of brutality and disregard for human life. He not only murdered his victims, but also dismembered them, preserving parts as grim trophies. This was not merely a man driven by violent impulses, but a predator who relished in the act of killing itself. His actions were devoid of any empathy or remorse, revealing a chilling detachment from the value of human life. Yet, as Dahmer descended further into this abyss, he did so under the radar. His outwardly normal demeanor and the unsuspecting nature of his victims allowed him to continue his reign of terror unchecked. This only emboldened Dahmer, pushing him deeper into his spiral of darkness. 
Jeffrey Dahmer was spiraling into a world of darkness, one from which there would be no return. His descent was not just a personal journey into the abyss, but a chilling testament to the depths of depravity that a human being can sink into. In the late 1980s and early 1990s, Dahmer's reign of terror escalated. As the calendar pages flipped relentlessly on, Dahmer's violent tendencies spiraled out of control, creating an atmosphere of fear and horror that would forever taint the city of Milwaukee. The man who would be dubbed the Milwaukee Cannibal was entering his most notorious years, his violence escalating to levels that would chill even the most hardened of souls. In these years, Dahmer's crimes took a gruesome turn, his actions becoming more sadistic, more horrific, and tragically more frequent. His victims, all young men and boys, were subjected to unimaginable torment at the hands of this seemingly ordinary man. Dahmer's method of operation was as chilling as it was methodical. Lured by the promise of money or simply companionship, these unsuspecting individuals found themselves ensnared in a horrifying web from which there was no escape. The number of victims grew at an alarming rate, their lives brutally snuffed out in the confines of Dahmer's apartment. 17. That was the grim tally of lives taken by this monster in human form. 17 lives cut short, 17 families left to grapple with the devastating loss. Each victim was a person with dreams, with hopes, with a future that was cruelly ripped away from them. The terror that Dahmer unleashed was not confined to his victims alone. The entire city of Milwaukee lived in fear, the horrific nature of his crimes sending shockwaves through the community. Parents clung tighter to their children, friends watched over each other, and trust in the safety of their city was shattered. As the 1990s dawned, Dahmer's reign of terror showed no signs of abating. His crimes became more audacious, his victims' suffering more protracted. This was a man devoid of empathy, a man who reveled in the suffering of others, a man who would go to any lengths to satisfy his depraved desires. The Milwaukee cannibal was now at the height of his terrifying reign. In 1991, Jeffrey Dahmer's reign of terror came to an abrupt end. The man who had once been a charming, seemingly ordinary individual was finally unmasked. His chilling secret laid bare for the world to see. July 22nd marked the end of Dahmer's gruesome spree. When one of his intended victims managed to escape and alert the authorities, the full horror of his crimes was discovered. The police were led to Dahmer's apartment where they found evidence of unimaginable atrocities. Photographs, tools, and most horrifyingly, remains of his victims were found, each piece of evidence painting a darker picture of Dahmer's horrifying deeds. Soon the media caught wind of the story and the case quickly turned into a media frenzy. Dahmer's face was plastered on every newspaper, every television screen, and the details of his horrifying crimes became the topic of every conversation. The public was both horrified and fascinated, unable to comprehend the depths of Dahmer's depravity. The trial that followed was no less sensational. Dahmer, ever the enigma, pleaded guilty but insane to the charges. The courtroom was filled with a palpable tension as each gruesome detail of his crimes was revealed. The victims' families, the jury, and the public watched in grim fascination as Dahmer, calm and collected, recounted his deeds with chilling detachment. The trial was a spectacle, a media circus that gripped the nation. Yet amidst the chaos, there was a sense of relief. Dahmer, once a predator lurking in the shadows, was finally brought to light. His reign of terror was over, and justice, though delayed, was finally served. The case of Jeffrey Dahmer serves as a chilling reminder of the darkness that can hide behind the most ordinary of facades. It's a tale of a man who lived a double life, a charmer on the surface, but a monster beneath. Jeffrey Dahmer, the charming man with a chilling secret, was finally behind bars. Jeffrey Dahmer's story doesn't end with his capture. His life in prison was just as filled with notoriety as his free years. He was a marked man, targeted by fellow inmates for his gruesome deeds. His end came in a fashion that echoed his own brutality. He was beaten to death by a fellow prisoner in 1994. But the real aftermath of Dahmer's reign of terror lies in the lives of those he left behind. The families of his victims carry the weight of loss and unanswered questions. Society too was left grappling with the horrifying realization 
of what an ordinary looking man was capable of. The ripple effects of his crimes continue to reverberate, shaping discussions about mental health, law enforcement, and the criminal justice system. The story of Jeffrey Dahmer serves as a chilling reminder of the darkness that can lurk behind the most ordinary of faces.